or no, uh, not yet. Hang on. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll give you the thumbs up. <laughs> it's buffering. Yeah, it's part of the process I've never seen before. I think with knife guys. So Dang, it's live. Well, it says we're live. So, hey, everybody. I have not been on here in a hot minute, but I wanted to welcome you to the Book Asylum. And today's amazing guest that we have on is Darren Frey. But first of all, let's talk to, let's say hi to the rest of our panel. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Jack and Ryan Rose are in the same room together. <laughs> I'm confused. It's a weird thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm so discombobulated right now. We have Angel, <laughs> we have Anthony Castro, and we also have the amazing Dungeon Dan. I'm Jenna Motto. You haven't seen this fit pretty face in a long time. Sorry, <laughs> but I am here and we want to welcome our guest, Darren Frey, who has Psychonautic. That is his book, and he is in the process of working on In Dreams. Is that the title of your second book? Yeah, but it, it's Fry. You, you got you got the first I'm name. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I think we do this every time, too, that we have you on. <laughs> we well, I, I, think I, I reminded everybody last time, but I, I, I forgot to this time. <laughs> it's yeah. all good. It's yeah, all thanks good. for the heads up. No. <laughs> if, there's any, if, there's any disgruntled, if there's any disgruntled Starks watching, I had nothing to do with it. It's Fry, not Fry. <laughs> just, just go with the flow and change your name, Darren. Yeah, that's just that. It, that it wasn't even. I'm, a Mr. I am man. now. I am actually in re all reality, Jennifer Tomato. So I'm just letting everybody know that that is just how it is. Jack has made me Jennifer Tomato, but um, yeah, I'm so excited to be on here. I haven't been on in such a long time. I, I finally have five minutes. How is everybody? Good. We missed you. So, happy, happy, good. Ready for some fun. Angel. Retired. Your birthday's today, buddy. Oh, yes, yes it is. Birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Angel. Yeah. Happy birthday. birthday. Finally <laughs> legal to drink in bars. Yeah. <laughs> He's 13. Yay. <laughs> uh, yeah, plus 20, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And know your book is re released today? What was that? Is your, your, also your book is released today, or is that? That was yesterday. With yesterday. Me. Okay. I apologize. Well, I Oh, and by the way, Jen, uh, I, I didn't want to change the subject, but now I got your old uh, Arizona ad address. I sent that to you in that the old address. Yeah, the Arizona uh, one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm I, at I, now. I got the paperback coming this way, and I'll be sending it to you. Sweet. <laughs> Sorry. And, <laughs> and we also have Jack. Uh, Jack is a uh, Jack is a uh, dress as a goat. Mind showing it. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I'm I'm only giggling because I'm a little lightweight jealous. I gotta find me a unicorn one. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. I'm, well, I'm you know, sure if you're all gonna I'm wear really go ahead. This just I'm sorry. I'm just saying this is just awkward sitting here next to a furry. It's really <laughs> but you know. I like it. If I have up. a very Again. suspicion that uh, with my comic book, I'm going to be meeting a lot of furries in my future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you're not already doing that. Right? right. Again, yeah, Richard, you, you know the drill. If he if he touches you, give us the hand signal. You know the signal. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> yes. Pork and beans is my safe word, okay? Pork, Pork and beans. <laughs> <laughs> that is a terrible safe word, by the way. <laughs> no, that's excellent. It works. <laughs> what? I identify as a goat. Fight me. <laughs> Today. <laughs> yeah. And this is really all because of a certain poet Kristen Vincent who dared me to do it some things you don't dare me to do because I, I got a dare for I you I think most things we just <laughs> should not dare you to do <laughs> we had fun with this <laughs> Wait, let's see if we can get him to jump off the roof <laughs> oh nothing that easy okay so Darren your book um your first one was psychonautic what is your your second one that is in dreams correct yes in dreams okay and give us a rundown of your book oh gosh um 
How am I supposed to do this without spoiling the first one? You're going to have to learn, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, okay. It's the test, of so, test we all have to live through. <laughs> okay. I, I think at this point, I mean, originally with Psychonautic, I was planning on it being a surprise until it wasn't. But I might as well just say it. it's a damn vampire story. You know, it's, it's a vampire story. I mean, Love vampires. everybody knows Let the Right One In was a vampire story before they write it. But the synopsis of it or the blurb said nothing about vampires so might as well anyway uh so yes after the events of the first one julian frost the main character is in a really really bad spot the he was in a bad spot to begin with but then his world kind of got good again but then now it's bad again and he's having these mysterious dreams where he's God, this is hard. <laughs> trying to, trying You're to, doing to good. Keep going. It, trying to simplify it like it's hard. But the, the, he's, he, he, he's having dreams of what he's lost. And he's got these ideas of how he can get this back. But he's, gosh, it's, it, he's, he's got a... Um, <laughs> There's it's, a lot of inner it? turmoil that's going on. He's Period. fighting more a lot with himself. <laughs> And with, you know, kind of in, from what I've read, because I'm, I'm reading this as he's writing it, um, I'm beta reading for him, but it, it seems like Julian is suffering from a lot of inner turmoil. He's trying to get used to being what he is. And he's trying to also get used to, uh -huh. you know, his life, just like you said, at the first book was him going from a shit situation to something way better that he never imagined beyond his dreams. And now the second one is, oh, we're going to yank that from underneath you, that rug from underneath you, and we're going to make you, you know, uncomfortable in your own skin again. So it, it, that's what it seemed like to me. Wow. Yes. You, you explained that very well. Cause yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, cause it, it's hard. Like even writing the, like the blurb on the back of it's like super tiny. I mean, it's oh, everybody's worst thing to write. I hate blurb writing. But a lot I of people, it. I'm getting a better response from this one than the first one. Because the first one, I really just did not know what, because there's so much stuff going on and I'm still not entirely sure how to market this. I mean, I know it's a, a vampire romance, but I even I cringe at that myself because when I hear vampire romance, I hear right. the same one word everybody hears. It is nothing like Twilight. I can attest it's nothing like Twilight. <laughs> Those people are emotional broomsticks compared to like, they just sit there. I mean, they, they, yeah, it's nothing and it's like Twilight and, but, but and I don't know. I mean, it, but, but yeah, it's, I mean, overall, I think it has way more depth than Twilight, to be honest. I don't. It, and, I wouldn't even put it in the same category. And I don't even know if I'd call it a dark fantasy horror or what, because I mean, there's, I don't, I guess, oh, yeah. singular category. I can't. I don't know how to put it in a singular genre still. It's. <laughs> well, I can't wait to read it. I, I've been through all the Anne Rice books, all the, the vampire uh, chronicles. I read all those. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be checking out Psychonauti. I will really Anne enjoy Rice. it. And you see, because. In a way, one thing too, since the vampire thing's out of the bag, I'm exploring different aspects. Like you have your softer, more romantic side vampires like Anne Rice's vampires that are yeah. more down to earth, more human. But then there's also vampires. I mean, they they look just as much human as the rest, but they're savages. They've been vampires since human beings existed and they're evil, you know, so... <laughs> It's a mixed bag, you know, there's something for everybody, you know, but it's That's a very, awesome. it's a very raw emotional story. A psychonautic is actually part autobiographical because I used it as a way to kind of let go of some stuff from my past. And I thought I since these characters had a fucked up life and I've had a pretty crazy life, I might as well just use it so it's like that so i could completely relate uh my comic book bad wabbit uh the character uh wabbit is uh got a very traumatic and messed up past uh much like some and a lot of the stuff that 
I'm going to project onto him is directly like from my life, kind of the stuff that I've been through. So I could totally understand and relate to that. That's, that's, you know, that's cool. Right. What you know, man, mm -hmm. I must have not lived a messed up enough life because ever since I started writing, nothing that I'm writing has anything to do with me. I'm literally making this crap up. About you're, life. you're trying to do splatter punk stuff. Yeah, you're you're trying. Yeah, to, you're necessarily... some of them are real. You're trying to go extreme on some of them. You're really you're testing yourself, and <laughs> that, that I think is is admirable because you're like literally jumping out of the gate like, hmm, let's see How what I can, can do. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I admire that. I mean, and that's kind of like um with my books. My first one, ba well, I mean, my series is based in my hometown. My first book was based on somebody that I knew personally. My second book, same thing. I know a woman named Stacy who actually I met because of pools. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, how, that's how I know her. And um, my third book that I'm writing now is a, it, it's, it's teaching me how to write um, in the male voice and a character that I have to completely make up on my own. I don't know anybody that this character is based off of. So this is my, this is my guy who I'm really challenging myself with. And then Jason, we all know is that whacked out dude <laughs> <laughs> from, from, from the padded room. Um, so he's the last book. And he's, you know, that's what his character is based off of. And it, his book is going to challenge me because it's going to be really, really, really bad, gory. And, and I've been challenged by trying to get worse as the storyline progressed. So I think I've done pretty okay. My first one was an easy read. There wasn't much. And I've had a lot of people like, hey, I loved it. It was so easy. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> wait till the second one. There's a lot of blood. And yeah, <laughs> anyway, for me that what I just learned really, I mean, I've went over this three times already, but this time in particular, I learned that like gore for one thing does not bother me, but when there's gore on top of an emotional character that it's happening to, there's somebody you care about. It's that's when it's hard. Like I, damn, I was in like a funk for like a few days after writing this one. Like I wrote this. I know what scene that is. <laughs> I, well, I'd, I'd wrote it. When I wrote it, I felt bad, but then I was like, oh, I'll move on. And then I went back and kind of edited it a little bit. I'm like, yeah, I feel bad. But then this last time, I'm like, dude, because I, all that extra, rough. and yeah, I don't want to give anything away, but yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, 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 I mean, I'm hoping eventually I'll get out of that as well, because I asked in some group if anybody has that issue, and somebody said they used to, but just the more stuff they kept writing like that, that just eventually became desensitized, which I guess that really is about what you, anybody has to do. Yeah. Well, I got a partial chub killing off these people. <laughs> <laughs> partial really jack partial? you couldn't even go full on for me when you killed me i was, me. Say, I, was I was expecting uh, 10 uh, fish and everything on dungeon, on dan. No, after, <laughs> I finished, after i finished off dungeon dan right there i had to smoke a cigarette finished hey <laughs> what yep. there uh, good there's choice of words uh, finished what, what's off. that richard there's a reason why it took so long for me to put out the third book in wild eyed southern boys because uh I mean, I kept getting sexually aroused every time Rue punched Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can dang. see. I can see. Rue is punching Jack. I'm, I'm punching the clown. You know. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That's great. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> Jack's our favorite punch and post. Yep. <laughs> pop yeah, right back pop up. Back. Favorite yeah. punching bag. Thankfully, I can take it. <laughs> well, I have yeah. bathroom wall says you can take anything, buddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's my bathroom wall. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter where. It still says it. <laughs> it's been published. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That's great. <laughs> so, Darren, do you have an I, your first cover? Oh, I want to talk about your cover of Psychonautic. 
Um, your first cover was pretty dope. Yeah, that looks really good. Do you have um, an idea? Do you already have an idea for your cover? Do you already have it kind of drawn out? Who's like, doing it? With the second one? Yes. You didn't. You didn't know. I, I've been posting it everywhere. You didn't. Hang on. I'm not getting it. <laughs> you hang on. Really? Yeah, I don't. I've, so. So I've sent it to you. What, was it the no? The green one, the green and black one. Hang was on. it the green one? OK, so now let's yeah, yeah. pretend that I asked you about your green cover. <laughs> <laughs> I see the cover. Yeah, I see the damage. Is that, yeah, is that what you're it. sticking with? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's that's it's done and done. I mean, they're um I'm waiting until I actually get this final uh edit finished and then in July I'm sending it to an editor and once we're done, I'm gonna format it because I formatted the first book and I used a, a template and just kind of did my own thing with it and thought it turned out okay. Mm -hmm. I guess but, uh but um after that, though, my cover artist, she's going to, she still has all the, the raw files and everything. She's going to size the, the spine for the paperback for me, but everything, yeah, it's, it's done though. It's, it's far, the cover's done. I, I love it. And um, every, it's, it's, I, I think people, people will, appreciate it more once the book is finished that's all i'm gonna say who did you get to do the cover her name is isla nate it's a i l a n a t e of isla designs um she's done both of them the first one and the second one and okay. she, um, i'm gonna do a third book and she's gonna do that one as well but i haven't even figured out yet what i'm one. Yeah, once you get a good artist, you might as well stick with them, right? Yeah, and she's she's great. She and she didn't really charge me that much either. I mean, she's you know fair, and like I said, she's gonna wait until it probably won't even be until like September ish before I know exactly how many pages the book yeah. is. But she's willing to wait until then to finish the the paperback cover for me. So yeah, um, that's cool. Yes, I mean she's she's a friend of mine on Facebook. You know we're cool to each other, so you know she's. You more. guys with with novels and actual books are so lucky. You only need one cover. You know I'm I'm in the comic book biz, and I have <laughs> yeah. like three different covers for the same comic book. You know I have the original and then two variants, and it's like all three of them are by different artists. So <laughs> that's yeah, but you lucky. have to make sure that one cover is perfect, or else. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've got one by uh, Jacob Carson that's the Star Wars-esque looking one you guys have seen. And then I have the other one that's by Tommy Guns, the guy who actually is drawing the comic book. And then we just added a third, or second, or I guess it would be the third variant, second variant. Uh, the second one is uh, is by me. So we got three different artists on that. And man, I wish I could just have one. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, real quick, let's let Richard run us through some comments. We've got a few people watching us out there. All right. All right. So, we got a few comments floating around out there. Uh, got Scott Adkins watching, character in my book. He's also who Buford's based on. <laughs> and we got uh, the lovely Patricia Chambers Rose. It's a hmm. cute name. I'm not going to see if I can hook up with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard she's married. married. Yeah, married. don't mess with the married ones. <laughs> that, that, that never stopped me. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, Carl Meadows. Hello, oh, mate. Hey, Carl. Hi, Carl. Hello, Hello Carl. Carl. Good. Good. We're just talking. Yeah. Little <laughs> oh, God, you guys, you're going to kill us. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and all of England is going to hate us. Yeah. Or, don't? I was going to say they don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know they got posters of all of our faces over there somewhere <laughs> the airport so patricia's asking about why the hell he's wearing this furry costume but uh Kristen, uh the the same one who dared him to don this ridiculous outfit uh explain that to her so we're good there <laughs> hey scott Atkins 
And where is Richard's onesie? I don't have one, and I'm not going to get one anytime soon. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> Although you would be pretty cool in a Sasquatch suit. Hey, yeah, you would. I could probably, I could probably, I could probably get us up in this one. We may try that before the show. We won't get that. Either. Oh my God, this show is going downhill. Now they're talking yeah, about getting the same clothes the together. <laughs> I mean, all I had was a leather gimp suit, but. Uh, I know about Bring out the game. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, oh man, you got me with that one. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack, I call you. Imagine what the DMs are like. Uh, so far I've got no DMs yet. And the cell down. Hello, she's out there watching. Hello. So, um, Darren, um, as you continue for, do, do you have an idea about how long you want this series to be? Okay, this is where it gets interesting. So, from Julian's perspective, there's going to be three books. After that, there's this second, oh, the first book, you know, is quite limited. I'll say that in terms of just the characters, like what's going on. The second book, everything just blows up like the whole world of vampires and everything because throughout most of the first well, I, I'm not going to give stuff away <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, uh, th basically though after after Julian's story is over with I want to continue it because you know this is really only a part of the story even though it's a pretty big story in itself but then there's so many things that have happened in the past leading up to what's happening now that I could spend the rest of my life writing like I have enough stuff just ideas right now to expand upon that I could spend the rest of my life probably writing this universe so the sky's the limit with it right now. I mean, I got other yeah. stuff unrelated to it that I would like to write, but kind of still takes place within that same universe because I'd want it all to just like Stephen King, pretty much everything he writes takes place in the same universe. That's what I want it to do. But but yeah, I mean, it, it's, yeah, this is just the beginning of it though, really. Awesome. And um, do do you have any of these books on Audible? I don't. I've thought about it, though, especially considering the nature of the character. Like, I'm visually impaired. I'm legally blind. I have retinitis mm -hmm. pigmentosa. And the main character in the first book, he has it. And um, so I've been thinking once I get his story complete, once I get these three books finished about going back and seeing about uh, I'd like to do a hardcover with all three books in one. I mean, it's oh, going to yeah. be huge. It's going to be like a huge ass, like Stephen King size. <laughs> but, uh, oh, right. It's cool though. But once That's it's done, fun. though, and it, it, once it's done though, I would like to get them all, get it all like done as, in like a audio book, just because for me, I'd like it. And like I said, just considering who I am as you know, a visually impaired person and the character is a visually impaired person. I think other people that are visually impaired that might be interested, you know, let give them a, a way to absolutely to, to hear the story. I'm a big audible person because I have kids and I'm doing stuff all the time. And so I really don't ever get a chance to just sit down and read. Yeah. Like if I do, I get 20 minutes in and I'm hearing somebody needing something or something needs to get done. So I'm really big on audible. Um, I, I listen to it. For hours yeah, while I'm I love audible as well and it's so much easier to listen than to read too you know oh well, yeah <laughs> yeah and it makes it makes those times that you can sit down with an actual physical book even more special yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. Now, i'll warn you up front if you uh happen to be reading a book by an author that you might be friends with you're never going to read it fast enough <laughs> 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 I mean, I took my time writing it, but I'm rushing him to read it. So <laughs> that's the way it works. <laughs> got a lot of reading I that's need to do. I've, I've had so many people reading my reading my chapters while I'm writing, and I've got 
a bunch of stuff still on my uh, my Kindle app that I need to read. And so, yeah. <laughs> I, know I, know the damage. Damage. Gosh, I got over hundreds of books I still need to read. <laughs> it's like every time I see something, oh, nice. I got to read it. I got to get it. I mean, right. you have people, And you get the big stack like I got. <laughs> so, Dan, yeah, you have people that read your, your stuff as you're writing it? What was that? I said you have people reading your stuff as you write it. If so, how does that affect how you write it? Like, does that make you want to go back and change things if people make suggestions? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, well, Jen's one of them. And then I have another friend, if she's watching, hi, Autumn. Detective Amato. Um, yeah, she, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, like, 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 I'll miss a lot of, like, I'll have typos and I'll miss things and they'll point them out to me. But then, I'll just I'll ask questions like usually if something like like if there's a twist or just something important I'll ask questions just you know how did this make you feel what do you think of that and the the feedback I get does help me see character the characters in certain ways like um for example Jen one of the like like the way you're seeing Julian right now and just like, yeah. those are like totally different than the way my other beta reader is. But I, I love it though, because it's just, it, it's showing me just how much these characters in the story is making people think. And mm -hmm. I love it because I've put, yeah, it, 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 and it has actually helped me influence, you know, what, how you know how the story would go like uh I have a friend my friend Autumn she's my other beta reader she read through the last draft that I was doing and she suggested that I included a certain character's backstory in this one um and I was gonna wait and do it later but then I was like wait a minute yeah that would be perfect so now um a character it'll it jen knows who he is but there this y'all won't but bernard's backstory now exists because because my beta reader suggested i should put it so in there so yeah it's that yeah it, they they're very helpful to me and you know i mean there's, there's people that'll read that will read it and be like yeah this is really cool but they won't re they wouldn't really offer much but i still you know i let them read it because they like to read it and it feels, you know, I mean, it feels good, you know, it feels good to have a friend that wants to read your work and, yeah. so, but then the ones that do that get really technical in there, it, it's very helpful. And so thank you. Thank you, Jen. And <laughs> thank you, Autumn. <laughs> I love reading it. I, I'm just, I, I like getting the sneak peek and seeing the raw come out. I, I like seeing that because then when the finished product comes out, I'm like, yeah, this is way better than what it was before, or, oh, we should have left in this other thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really, I like being able to compare. Oh, yeah, cool. it's like one thing about having beta readers, you just need to make sure that you have beta readers that aren't afraid of hurting your feelings. So that'd be. Okay. Well, that's I'll definitely me. <laughs> or wearing a goat suit. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want somebody to tell me, oh, it's great. All the time when they're reading, it's yeah, great. I, I don't it, you know. No, it, my, it's my first uh, draft. It's it's shit. I already yeah, know yeah. this. <laughs> don't lie to me. <laughs> well, people that know me well enough know that I am a very blunt, straightforward person and that I can tell the difference between, you know, kind honesty and just outright being an asshole. So <laughs> every, those, um, those people, yeah, those I, people, I, they're, I'm cool and they're cool. So yeah, it's. <laughs> So yeah, it, but but yeah, there's a yeah. <laughs> well, I like that question. It's something I've been thinking about recently. Uh, the people I beta read for, Jeff Thompson is about the only one that'll send me batches. Otherwise, I get the whole book when it's when they feel it's finished. And I and with some of the stuff I'm doing, I'm like, I wonder if I should just have somebody read these because I'm either feel like I'm getting lost or veering off, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, so hearing, hearing Darren, you know, likes to put it out by chapters. I could see where that's the benefit, but I'm kind of wondering how, um, uh, Richard and angel feel. Cause I, I think you guys just do the whole book, right? You send yes. it out to beta readers when it's done. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, I, I send it per chapter. Do you, uh, Your chat, you do it by chapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, so, no. 
pay the rent. Mm-hmm. No, for me, poor Jack has to read the entire book. <laughs> <laughs> now, is Jack your only beta reader or do you have others? No, I got others. Okay. Yeah, no, but Jack likes to uh, edit my stuff as well. So, yeah, you know, two for the, one. Yeah, two he's for always one, good yeah. for multiple uses. <laughs> <laughs> Jack pointed out like a multitude of uh, grammatical errors and shit in my book. No, I won't say a thousand of them. I did have it professionally edited, but it was uh, <laughs> a lot of so it's been it's been a, it, it's been corrected and uploaded so hopefully the new yeah sometimes they even the professionals still miss things yeah. oh yeah it screenshot. happens yeah if i were to screenshot some of our text as i was you know it's like literally in real time if i found a typo or a missing comma or something I would send well it yeah to you it. have to do it in real time so it was like mm-hmm. here's my comment then, they, then his return would be shit <laughs> And then, and then, damn it. And it was just all the way yeah, down. Yeah. <laughs> I worked the damn thing with Grammarly a thousand times. Yeah. And I, and yeah. Edited. You don't find it shit. That's just stupid shit. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. The twice or some shit. Yeah, Grammarly, Grammarly is good. It's not the oh, uh, you know, is end all be yeah. all. It's not the yeah. saving no. grace, but it does help. No, it I does Grammarly and, and I still find stuff after I'm done and I'm like, eh, well, of course, but, of course. Yeah. So, so now do you uh, run your stuff through Grammarly there? I used to, but I've, I'm kind of, I don't know. I mean, if, if I'm really uncertain about a paragraph or a sentence or just something doesn't seem right to me, I'll just take it on there and just paste it in and, but just this, I, I used to, I, I would take like a full chapter through it. And, but now it's just, I, I, I think it's my eyes really, because my eyes are kind of, my, my yeah. contingency dentist, it's getting worse. So on that mm. white, bright ass screen, it like fries my eyes, even when I dim the brightness on my screen. So I, I try to avoid it as much as I can, but I do occasionally use it if I am uncertain about, like some sort of punctuation thing because that seems to be my uh, like I god I I I'm not good at punctuation like yeah, some I mean, things I commas I'm not good with commas and I seem to go rogue with dashes more often than I should and just <laughs> <laughs> yeah the I rogue know. dash man it really is a lifesaver, though. I mean, it, uh, you can't go with every single suggestion it makes. And, yeah, but and it, sometimes is you'll it is helpful. It is helpful. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. you'll correct something and it'll bring it right back. No, I really want you to change no, it. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. fuck you. <laughs> yes. It has a lot to do with the preferences. Like if you do formal, informal, whatever the hell it is, like you're looking for, you know, you click on all that stuff. It, it's hard to tell what it's trying to get you to do so <laughs> most of my stuff is punctuation like you said you know i'm horrible at punctuation i deal out commas like i'm at the card table i'm just like that's the longest sentence i've ever seen in my life that's the longest one on sentence i am really bad with punctuation oh, oh my god you know what? i'm actually going to give you credit for that bad joke i, I don't think anybody <laughs> <cared about. laughs> does any do anybody does anybody else here use the um i don't i don't even know what it's called i call it the read back you know where you can where you can just have have it read it back to you yeah yeah with I a do. voice yeah yeah because i find a lot of my um i do structure problems when I hear it read back to me, I'm like, how did I not see that? Yeah, that it, yeah, I, I use that a lot too. It, Do you? It, like, the way it pauses, like with like what you know, like with periods and then commas and everything. And and then like, but then it's like I was thinking, like, well, you know, also at the same time, there's not really any emotion in it. There's so no I'll, emotion. That, that's that's a bad point. Yeah. So I'll I'll Once read a upon a time. <laughs> it, it is very useful. Like it is very, very useful, though. I yeah. Yeah. It's just a name really? someone that suggested that I do that when I first started writing because I never thought of doing it. He's like, dude, totally listen to it because you'll catch stuff that your eyes just will not see, but your yeah. ears will be pop exactly. up. Right. Because it's in your head, that. you're seeing that it. Is. You know, mm-hmm. so I'll find all kinds of things where I'm like, wait a minute, how did I go from this to that? I missed a whole section. 
but I didn't see it until I heard it read back to me. And I'm like, all right, time to go in and write some more into that chapter. Yeah. I've never tried that having it read it back to you, but I've read it. I always read my chapters out loud myself. Right. Oh, I've never done that. <laughs> I'll, I'll sit in my couch and I look like I'm talking to myself all day. Getting an expert already. opinion. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I've just has to ask me, are you reading your book or are you just having another psychotic episode? Yes. <laughs> just yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now Darren, what uh, when you first started writing, what was like the one thing that just always seemed to slow you down? Because I've run into that myself. I, for me, it's just the lack of time. I don't always have the time that I want. So for you, what what were some stumbling blocks that maybe kind of held you back from getting done when you maybe wanted to get it done? Okay, um, you cut out in that first part there. I don't, I, I didn't hear what you said in that first part. Oh, okay. Um, when you first started writing, what were some things you ran into that you know slowed you down? That kind of held you back? You know, little issues that you had to work out to get your story to flow. Mm, ah, gosh. I would probably say my one of my biggest I don't know like I, I don't know like I I seem to have the biggest problem telling instead of showing with a lot of stuff and then it I don't know like well, not necessarily that but like a lot of like passive aggressive like God, passive aggressive God, <laughs> passive voice narrative yeah. stuff and just it's hard to explain but everything was just in a jumble it, it that makes sense just thrown together and just nothing re, re, i don't know and uh you're talking, but, about but, the, but, you're talking about the flow of the story yeah like it was just jumbling up the flow like just a little bit of stuff here a little uh, bit there and just it, everything was just out of order and it makes sense yeah no, i understand what I, you're saying and yes. when, when I when I, I moved out to Las Vegas, I was taking two writing classes there at once, the community college, and and I don't know why my whole entire life I've written, but it just it never clicked until I started getting taught by a teacher how to do sentence structuring, you know, how to be better at showing instead of telling, and and then it just I don't know, it's weird things just kind of. I don't want to say they magically started coming together because it just sounds kind of cliche, but it did. It just, it seemed like I just got some kind of like random download or something like, oh shit, I know how to write all of a sudden. <laughs> like, I mean, I've always known how, but now I know how to write. Like, what the yeah. hell? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I... that, was, that was my biggest problem though. It just, it looked like a damn train wreck. It just, it just nothing really made, nothing flowed. It just, nothing made sense and till i finally figured out how to sit so sentence structuring i guess that would be the short answer sentence structuring was my biggest problem <laughs> okay. well there we go nice. yeah all right 10 years later <laughs> time just flew by there you are here you are now on the book of Solomon podcast hanging out with the group of the craziest people i know <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. glad to have you back on again and you know as we're talking about how you're planning on like creating a larger universe um how early on in the writing process did you know that you wanted to do that he's thinking on it. that's well okay well i had written a novella loosely based on my story now years ago and then I was like, okay, I'm not satisfied with this. I want to do something different. So I want to rewrite it. But then after I wrote it, I was like, okay, I want to do something more than this, but what? And then really, I guess all of this other stuff beyond the first book started coming together within maybe the last two years, maybe. And then the more thought I put into it, the more I think about characters, what they've done, who they are now, you know, what they did to get where they are now, who they did it to, to create even more characters. And I think, well, what, okay, well, what were they doing? And then all of a sudden it's that. So yeah, I mean, you really, yeah, it's, it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I like Viking, there's Vikings that can come into it. There's fucking Nephilim can come into it at some point. Uh, 
uh, Angel, as much as you're into history, uh, what do you know about Charlemagne? Because in the third book, Charlemagne's going to come into it. Uh, not much, to be exactly. honest. Well, it's not really big. It's just, it's more or less, like his, the way he died, like, like, like the way he died, like the events surrounding his death, I'm going to kind of play with that a little bit since it's like so long ago shouldn't really matter anymore <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean I'm gonna have so much fun with this though I they I'm in the one I'm writing now there's a there's a diary that's being read through it and you know I'm right like like when my characters went to Woodstock because she's in love with Janis Joplin she went into this club and saw Andy Warhol and just I'm having I mean I'm looking I'm doing all this research to make sure all these real people were in these real places to make you know just in, in making sure I'm not characterizing anybody to do anything that could get me in trouble but I'm just I'm having so much fun and I'm creating this world and it's I don't know it's just it's it's, it's making me happy <laughs> that's, that's, good. Good. that's, that's a good thing Heck yeah that's what matters man I try to stay away from history because I don't <laughs> like doing the research <laughs> yes this has been so all the research has been so much fun you know i love it and and the cool thing too is i could write stories in so many different genres like because there's there's vikings people that were vikings before they became vampires that have stories to tell and yeah. it's so yeah like it's and then i had two other characters that are like inseparable in my second book and I have a story in mind that I want to write for them when they were orphans and on the streets of London back when they met in like the year 1666 that wasn't just to sound cool and trendy I did that because the plague was going on and then the great fire of London happened that year so yeah I mean it's just I, I love like it re man like just doing all this research has just opened up all these new doors for me so yeah <laughs> so you really honestly could just write on a whole like a whole different level of different universe that, well in the same universe whole different level series from this yes. one particular book that you decided to write well, that yeah. is so cool yeah, and I didn't even have all this other stuff in mind. I mean, like I said, I have other stuff that's not even related to any of these characters at all that, like, happen in, like, I have a couple stories that happen in the same town that Julian grew up in, in Virginia, then that's just the only connection, really. And then, like, the Viking thing, I want to write, like, you know who Cadence is, I want to write a story about him and stuff that happens before, you know, he becomes a vampire. And there's going to be even more stuff if you could explain to me why he's such a turd, I'd really love that. <laughs> There's more of him in the third book because you'll, you'll 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 get to see the past in the third book, so that one's going to be fun. <laughs> I have a question. As authors, when you're dropping uh, like the backstory of somebody into a book, do you prefer doing that like all in one lump, or do you guys like spreading it out throughout the story? um you know that like like i'm doing with bad wabbit you're gonna get a lot of pieces of his back story as the, the series goes on but i'm not dropping it all in one spot you know but is it easier to spread it out or do you guys like to just drop it in one lump sum i think it just depends on what, how much uh how big how important that section of the story is to the yeah. entire yeah. I, I like to release my load action. <laughs> I, 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 I do mine like in chat I spread it out but it, I mean if it's yeah. just a, a one shot like just a, a single incident that you want to cut that you want to uh, capture in the story then you know you can just do it all in one one chapter yeah. easy but it just depends on the just it just mm -hmm. depends on the blow of the story really yeah I like the way you did it Richard when in, in the first uh, Wild Eyed Southern Boys when you kept going back to the the uh, knights of templar you know that was really good mm -hmm. well done that'd be more of that i love those backstories because in the way he does it where he drops them in it ties in with what's happening current exactly he keeps, he keeps that flow going so uh jen did you do any of that type stuff in uh the group series like giving some you know flashbacks or anything yeah. like that Jana blew her load when she was talking to Stacy. Uh, <laughs> 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 
was not expecting that. That was a, a delightful <laughs> little uh, <laughs> joke there. Uh, yeah. Are we going to see your books on Audible anytime soon? That What's that? We're going to see your book, your books on Audible anytime soon? I am hoping so. I have to talk to uh, the boss lady at Angry Eagle Publishing and find out exactly how or what do I need to do to get them on Audible. I've had multiple people ask about that and it would just... It, it would really, a lot of people would really, a lot more people than I thought listen to Audible. I can't. I am I may sit down and read. I don't care if it's on a Kindle or if it's the actual book. I like the actual books because I'm old school like that. But I I will listen to Audible, and like especially if I'm driving across country like I just did this last week. Definitely will listen to Audible. <laughs> so, but uh, I, I'm a, I'm a, hold it in my hand kind of a gal do me a favor oh jen if you go audible don't let jack do any of, of those oh, no. is european <laughs> things to that one. Oh, i am not I'm gonna not hire him for jana uh, no don't uh, anthony ask tucker yeah this is the tucker yeah, you. Oh. he's whining yeah. i think he needs to go out oh the baby right. he's gonna wait he'll wait <laughs> Always an animal appearance on this show. You can about guarantee it every now, time. One thing, so, there's one thing I'll say about Audible, especially you know, there's a lot of people that, that are old school. They like you know the the, mm-hmm. the, the, the yep. paper. I want to smell my book. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You know, some people prefer a Kindle where they can just carry it anywhere they want, and others you know prefer uh, you know Audible. Well, I, here's my advice to any any reader out there: if you know. You want to read a book, fine. But I, I suggest if you read a book that you really like, go back and listen to the audible version because if you have a good voice actor, yeah, they're ready the oh, story, yeah. they bring the story to life like yes. never most definitely. Man. Absolutely. They make they make or break it honestly, because you get somebody who's like uh, the boy went down the road and he said mm-hmm. yeah. just his boy. Yeah, somebody monotone. Yeah. That's well, all it's like my to. first audible I ever <laughs> ever listened to was Fight Club. Oh, um, nice. And I wrote I wrote I read the book, the actual paper book. I read it like two or three times. And then I went and re- got the audible and I listened to it, and it was totally just <laughs> totally different experience it was it was so cool so yeah those those people that read those audibles can really make or break a story you know yes they can yep Mm -hmm. i gotta get just the right because my first book is jana's from england she's a transplant from england to here so i have to find the right vocalist who's going to do it well, uh, Blocky <laughs> was done by a pretty good British lady. I was yeah, say, it was. Self doing it, you need to holler at Paul. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I was talking to Chris Frillbrook about her the other day, the narrator for uh, Carl's books, and yeah, it's been. I don't know how much, but she's oh cheap. yeah, but she's she's too Liverpool. I need somebody who's more posh because Jana's posh. There's a difference. Yeah, believe it or not, there is a difference. She yeah. doesn't, yeah. Jana does not sound like Adele when you talk. <laughs> if you have ever seen an interview with Adele, she's very, you know, Liverpool, other side of the tricks kind of gal. But Jana is more posh. And if she's watching, hey girl, I'm, I'm trying to explain <laughs> to these Americans, <laughs> but, but yeah, she. She had to, they all talk funny, but there is a difference. <laughs> she had to explain it to me. And I felt, I felt like, I'm like, oh my God, I am a dumb American. Just thinking that they all talk the same. They don't. So, so I mean, got to do it. Just tour the United States and, and see how different we all talk. You know, you've been just, there, done that. When I just drove 2000 back. miles back from Ohio to here to Arizona. Yeah. That was an experience. I've never, oh my, Yeah. I tried to talk as little as possible to other people because they were like, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> you talk. Ohio. <laughs> I'm just from Ohio. I'm a basic Midwest girl. <laughs> so now as we're getting down towards the end of the show here, one thing I hadn't thought to ask is, you know, with your vision problems, do you use like that dragon speak or, 
you know, what do you use like a recording stock or recording equipment to actually write the book? Yeah, or are you honestly, I am write? like thrilled that you do not let anything stop you from writing. And this is like, you're such a good role model for those people who think that, oh, I have a disability. I can't do this. You know, yeah, you can. So what yeah, kind of equipment do you use, if any? Just Zoom on Word. <laughs> I zoom in on and 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 I have a a dark theme so it, the white doesn't fry my eyes. Uh, ah, it's white. Okay. Right? So you are still physically broke. Okay, that's cool, man. Yeah, I mean, I can like I, said, I can still see. That is one thing. Like a lot of people hear legally blind, and they just they hear the blind, but they. I mean, a lot of people don't understand. But I mean, I can still see, just not great. But my condition is degenerative, meaning that I. I mean, I. I, I could go blind. I mean, completely blind. Like it's mm-hmm. tunnel vision. Like my tunnel, vi- it's like it's closing in on me. But um, I like with my laptop. Like like if I have my laptop right in my face and I'm zoomed in, and like so I'm not blinded by like it's not too bright, you know, and, and everything. I'm I'm fine as far as that goes, at least for right now. I mean, down the road sometime, who knows? I mean, I I, I see that word has things on there where you can talk to it i don't know exactly Mm -hmm. how good their voice function is because i I tried it i hate it (laughs) because literally every every time you take a pause this was just me being lazy seeing how well it worked and because i was like you know how much i could get done in my book if i was just able to talk so i tried it and every time you take a breath or pause it puts in a period and then it starts a new sentence so you have to go back and double check it anyways yeah. And I'm just like, well, this sucks. And it doesn't do commas. They, it does not do commas. Unless you tell it. It writes well, dr- comma. With dragon actual speaking, <laughs> it writes you, comma. you can say it writes comma. comma. <laughs> it writes but, comma. Yeah, I tried dragon software when I was driving back from Texas to Tennessee when I, when I got out of the military. And I, I mean, my, my sentence would go like, well, Rue entered the room and saw a Sasquatch standing in the corner. Motherfucker, damn it! That's <laughs> <laughs> a fucking road. <laughs> it's it. <laughs> well, yeah, looking, it's looking over at his beautiful wife. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, if I'm sending a message, like on Facebook or like a text or something, just talking to my phone, to me, it's, it's, that's one thing. But if I'm writing a story, I want to be able to actually write it because to me, it just it feels different, I guess, than just saying it. Because I don't know, maybe maybe it's just in my head or something, but I don't know. To me, it just feels like it would be just easier writing it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's just my job writing, writing it. It's not writing. Yeah. Or it might be just a thinking thing, you know, because I'm actually physically writing it. It's just easier to think that way. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Got anything there, Dan? You look like you're just chomping at the bit. No, I don't have anything. You guys are all asking the good questions. I'm just like, fuck it. I'll just ride this one. I can't do the talking things. I can't do right there. <laughs> the I can't do the thing. talking thing because I always say, uh when i'm trying to think of what to say next so my <laughs> sentence is always like i was uh doing this uh <laughs> it's like uh, okay yeah but you pull it off pretty well yeah <laughs> not like the rest of us we're all like fuck what am i saying <laughs> <laughs> that just sounded stupid <laughs> that's what i i read back myself and i'm like oh my god who taught me english <laughs> Right, I didn't realize. That How do that. I, I call myself, myself an author when when my yeah. shit looks like this? <laughs> so bad. Oh, so damn. what's well, next, guys. Darren? What? What's next for you? Are you just gonna keep writing these books, or or is there an end? Well, like I said, I after this book, after this book, I well. I think it maybe like was like a little bit of a break, maybe just to try to regroup myself a little bit. But with the, there's a third book. I've already got like fifty thousand words written on the rough draft of the third book. Okay. Uh, but Jeez, I mean, I I want I want to try to get Julian's the, the Julian trilogy out of the way first, and then, yeah, 
after that, I'm honestly not sure. It, I mean, I kind of have an idea for something else I want to write that's not related to it. But I don't know. I mean, I want to try to traditionally get published. Like, I feel like if I write something that would be marketable, maybe it'd be nice to try to see if I could. But I don't really know what the hell is marketable. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's a million dollar question, to be honest. Well, you and Are I you have talked. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I finally Are you had a question. Are you are you self-published? Yeah. Okay. I, I sent the first book to, to a lot of a lot of agents and I tried agents because I don't know, like I try but nobody I had one person that told me they had high hopes at first, but then completely got or got disappointed. Everything else was like whatever that means. Everything yeah. else is the generic co copy and paste response but with that yeah i don't and i don't know if they took offense to some of the words that were used in that first chapter because when i was when i was in my writing class i submitted that first chapter as a project and somebody took offense to a certain word in that book even though the context of it was not i don't know, I, i'm just, i'm just wondering if maybe somebody took something wrong i i, I don't know but I mean, I'm not trying. I, I everybody keeps telling. I mean, I think I'm a I'm a good writer. Everybody keeps telling me this wonderful, excellent writer that I should be traditionally published. I mean, I'd like to be traditionally published, but well, I had, I talked to you about how my you know how I got published. So that's always an option because it's still kind of self publishing. But you go through Angry Eagle Publishing, and yes, I'm promoting my publisher on here because I can <laughs> angry eagle mm -hmm. publishing is definitely I really appreciate her she does everything for you she does the cover she does the editing you know she's DJ's awesome she's awesome DJ, say the name it's okay DJ Cooper she's awesome she's yep. got her own she's got her own um cover business she's got her own publisher publishing business she also writes books she has anthologies that you could check out if you didn't want to just give them a whole working a whole working a book that you had that's okay. what i did and and she's got a magazine um but yeah i i that's i it was a no-brainer for me and and she does not take from us like other places do i would right. never go somewhere a, a bigger or, or anything like that because i i appreciate everything that she offers and what she gives back to us as authors so. yeah well guys as much as i hate to do it we have reached the end of the program but make no mistake darren once you get that next book ready to go buddy your seat is still at the table so yep. we'll be back. You're yeah. always so welcome back. We're, we're gonna do like we always do real quick. That way I can go get some food and fat boy over here because he's you know starting to look at me like a lamb shop. Mr. Rudy potty. Gotta be gotta be gotta be careful with him. He'll turn me into chili before this thing's all over. <laughs> in, in, going around the room, let's start off with birthday boy, Angel Ramon. Boy. Yes. Tell everybody where they can find you, sir. Oh, you can find me on and on Amazon. Type in Angelus Maximus for my historical fiction stuff. Angel Ramon for my zombie stuff. You can find me on my Facebook group, The Legionaries of Angelus Maximus. You can find me on the book asylum, written on them and all that. And you can find me on Patreon. Just type in Angelus Maximus and you can support me on Patreon. Read my early stuff and get some swag. Right on. Jim Amato, who just suddenly has all kinds of stuff going on What's up? <laughs> you can find me on amazon um just uh type in jenna motto and uh you'll see my whole i i actually have a couple of anthologies that i'm in and uh you'll see the group series there um which the group stacy is out for pre-release and will be released may 30th i'm very excited Yay. that's the second book <laughs> so I've gotten and actually uh you know I just got a nice little um the last week I've gotten two really nice reviews personal reviews that were really awesome so I'm very thrilled about um how well the book is doing and um 
And then you can also find me, Jen Amato Author, on Facebook. You can also find me, Jen Amato Author .net, I believe it is. I think that's my website. <laughs> well, um, to right. <laughs> yeah, you can you can find me here. You can find me over there. You can find me everywhere. I'm actually pretty easy <laughs> <Yeah>. to find, but <laughs> but um, yeah. On a boat, where they go? Actually, yeah. Actually, getting me to respond right. <laughs> Right, right when I can. I sometimes might have to wait. No goats involved. No. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Oh, well, continuing on around the room, let's swing through here with Miss Anthony Castro, Mr. Bad Wabbit. What's up, buddy? Where can everybody find you? All right. Uh, everybody can find me at dmwcomics.com. I have every single link to every single thing that I am connected to on that website. Uh, you just go to my social tab. Uh, you can also go to the shop where you can find all kinds of cool uh, Bad Wabbit merch and not just Bad Wabbit merch. I got all kinds of cool stuff in there. Um, I also have my Kickstarter going on. It's uh, in the pre-launch phase right now. And I think the link for that is also on my social tab in DMW Comics. So basically, if you want to find me anywhere on anything, just go to DMW Comics, click on the social tab, and I'm right there. Fantastic. Well, since you're sitting right there, why don't you tell them where they can find you? Well, you can find me sitting right here next to Jack Childress in his apartment. Oh, and uh, probably not all night. <laughs> <laughs> Yet to be determined. Find me on Amazon. <laughs> find me on Amazon, uh, Richard R. Rose, and uh, you can find me on Facebook, Richard R. Rose author page, and uh, my website, which has recently gotten a nice little facelift. I've revamped my entire uh, website, so it's good to go. You can go in, go in there. You can sign up for my uh, newsletter, or you can uh, go to my store section in the menu menu drop down bar and uh, get all your wild eyed southern boys needs all kinds of merchandise and all three of my books that are available right now dead cold war released so the boys are back in town so uh get your copy today we're alert the baron killed got everybody. mine yeah yeah oh, everybody mine. dies but the bear baron so <laughs> <laughs> dungeon dan i hear you got a little something in the works over there yeah uh Short story is almost done, and then I have to go through my first run. And I actually have a full book that's three quarters of the way done. Woohoo! So getting there. Yay! I'm not in a rush. Just I'm getting there. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Well, let's wrap this thing up, Mister Fry. Let them know where you can be found, good man. All right. I am on Amazon. You can put my name in, Darren Fry, F-R-E-Y. Um, first book is Psychonautic. It's spelled P-S-Y-C-H-O-N-A-U-T-I-C. Um, you can find that on um, paperback, on Kindle, Kindle Unlimited. And In Dreams will be released on October 31st, Halloween, on Kindle, uh, KU, and paperback, and you can pre-order it on Kindle now. And then you can find me on Facebook. Just type in uh, Darren Fry Author, and you know you can follow my page. Or if you want to send me a friend request, you know, go right ahead. That that's Be careful. Where you could wind up. You could wind up like me with over seventeen hundred friends. <laughs> and he knows each one of them. He oh, really yeah. does. <laughs> he paid him. Of course he knows. <laughs> he sends out checks regularly. <laughs> You're literally making friends with a guy in a goat suit. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, it's been a blast. Darren, thank you so much for coming on with us again. Uh, it's a pleasure. And it was great to get inside your mind, kind of find out what's going on. And like you said, it's hard to. Explain. Oh, you don't want to get inside my mind, man. <laughs> 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 You'd be surprised. Remember, again, guy, goat suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're telling a guy in a goat suit that stuff. Yeah. So you say to the party. <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no Fantastic. problem. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you all back here again next week. Same mm -hmm. time, same mm -hmm. station, spreading all around the internet, taking over the world one ear at a time, one set of eyes at a time. For everybody on the show, Dungeon Daniel Bell. Jen Amato, 
Centurion Angelus Maximus, comic book creator Anthony Castro, our guest for the week, Darren Fry, my sidekick and partner who uh, is hanging out with a goat, by the way. <laughs> costume over here. You're like, you know, Alfred or whatever. Hey, no judgment here. <laughs> All the judgment folks right are here. a little weird. <laughs> So until next week, we will see you on the other side. Peace out. See you. Later, guys. <laughs> Bye. See you. <laughs> and darker. All right. And, and, and. <laughs>